So Elon Musk just did an interview with the All In podcast discussing about SpaceX, Tesla, and all those good stuff. You guys can find the link in the description if you guys want to watch the full thing. But of course, I'm only going to break down the Tesla stuff. And Elon mentioned a lot of updates regarding Tesla Optimus, FSD, all these awesome things that we are invested in for for the long term. And these are some really good updates. I would even go as far as some bombshells were dropped. That's all I'm going to say. So I don't know. I don't want to waste any more time. Let's get down to the video. It was a sheesh video. Smash that like button, hit subscribe because it's exciting. It's always exciting. Let's go. We're going to break down this video to talking about the Optimus first and then the FSD. Let's see what Elon has to say. And we're going to talk about it. We're finalizing the design of Optimus version three. That really is going to be a very remarkable robot. It will have the essentially the manual dexterity of a human, so meaning a very complex hand, an AI mind that can navigate and comprehend reality, and it will be made in very high volume. Those are the three things that are missing. Like if you see any other um, robotics uh, company, they're missing those three things. Those are the three really hard things. I don't think you realize how big this is. Elon's talking about these three things, manual complex hand, AI mind, and scalability, which is volume. These three things other companies don't have, and Tesla has it. And it's true, if you want to compare it to the Chinese companies, sure, they may have some sort of a scale, but they don't have the AI mind, the intelligence. They don't have the complexity of the hand. And we'll talk about the hand in a bit, because that comes up in details, which is pretty phenomenal. But they don't have these things. They don't have these three components. Now, that's China. If we go to the US, let's talk about figure, or even Bostic Dynamics. I mean, figure... The AI mind is not there yet. They don't have the complexity hand. Volume, I mean, they are, I guess, getting up on volume. AI mind, they're still developing, but Tesla is the only company that has the, the amount of real world data than any other company on the planet. And they're going to use this for the optimist. This is big. The only company that has these three big, massive things that's going to increase the volume and make this scalable and make this intelligent and looking like a humanoid robot is Tesla. Elon also discussed that Tesla Gen 3 is also being finalized. I think we're probably going to get a taste of it on the shareholder vote on November 6th. I think that's going to be interesting. Now, he goes into depth about Tesla Optimus talking about the supply chain. Take a listen. The supply chain and production challenges of it, because we have, there is no supply chain that exists for humanoid robots. So it has to be, we have to recreate it from scratch. Um, and which requires doing a lot of vertical integration. And none of the actuators in Optimus um, are available from an existing supply chain. Now, we all know that Tesla is notorious for being vertically integrated. But the fact that they are tr making this supply chain from scratch, the humanoid robot supply chain from scratch, that is insane. This is why Tesla is always the best risk adjusted stock to own, investment to own. Not financial advice, but in my opinion, it is because they're vertically integrated. If you look at Tesla cars being made in Shanghai, it's the most Chinese car ever made. Same thing in Germany, same thing in the US, because they're vertically integrated. And what better, to, what better way to scale these important products and knowing that you, only you have the supply chain for that. So this is very important, and I'm very glad that Elon said this because they're doing vertical integration for the human and robots as well, which is a sheesh moment but then he gets into the numbers of this these numbers are pretty big but i i think it is accurate to say that if successful optimus will be the biggest product ever and the cost of it at scale 20 30 40 thousand dollars a robot what, what do you think the first wave of them will cost and when will we be able to buy one to work on the ranch i think that the, the marginal cost of production once you hit a million units per year is probably around the $20,000 range. It sort of depends on how much you spend on the AI chip in the robot, and you need to achieve a lot of efficiencies in the actuators. Uh, there are um, 26 actuators per arm, like 26 electric, like motors, gearboxes, and power electronics. The AI chip will be pretty expensive. Like that, that might be like five, five or six thousand dollars of the of the materials, maybe more. But I think at volume, at a million units a year, the, the production 
cost is probably on the order of $20,000, maybe twenty five, dollars something like that. The price will be as a function of demand. Now, of course, we do know that Elon continues to say that Optimus will be, will be the biggest product ever, as well as other people, important people are saying the same thing too. But he is guessing that when Tesla hits 1 million units a year, and Elon has mentioned that he, will, he would be surprised if they're not doing that much by 2030, the price could be around 20 to 25,000 a bot. That means a million robots, let's say 20,000 at the least, that's 20 billion revenue, 25 billion at this case, the highest case, 50% profits on that is 10 to 12 and a half billion dollars. Like this is massive, right? And this is by, he's aiming for 2030, and this is just the bots. We've got the robot taxis, energy, and all those amazing things. So the Optimus, even though I can't comprehend the numbers, I can't, you know, it, it hurts my brain when I look at the numbers and when I scale it to 2035, 2040, 2050, when you got a billion bots, I just can't comprehend how big these numbers are going to get. Elon's talking about this Tesla could be worth as high as 30 trillion. I mean, that is in flipping sane. The robot taxis I can, but the bots, I cannot. Not yet, at least. But here's the interesting part. They're talking about the hand. And as I mentioned earlier, we're going to come back to talk about this. And this is what Elon had to say about the hand. Can you maybe explain to everybody why the hand is so important to get right and why, you know, the actuator design is so unique and, you know, why it's so difficult, why nobody makes it and why you have to start there almost to build the rest of the, the robot properly? Well, it turns out human hands are incredibly that they've evolved to this to be this incredibly sophisticated machine like the your hand is you know, an, an, an actually a remarkable thing it's you look look closely at your hands <laughs> and and think of all the things you could do with your hands which is a lot <laughs> i can think um, of many things <laughs> yeah i was just thinking about something it's, you know your, your hands are a very versatile instrument most of the muscles of, of, of the hand are, are actually in the forearm so your, your hand is kind of like a, like a, like it's like a puppet, like it's mostly a puppet. The muscle, the muscles are coming from the forearm and they're pulling the tendons, uh, which are, you know, the, also human tendon designs in, or, or human, human tendon evolution is incredibly good. So you, you've got this web of tendons, you, you, you've got, I think, I think the, the human hand is something like, depending on how you count it, 27 or 28 degrees of freedom per, you know, in, in the hand. It's amazing. In, in order to create a robot that can, uh, be a generalized humanoid, you, you must solve the, hand, the hands problem. Now that's pretty interesting. That is just so depth in detail. I've never thought about talking about my hand or ever hearing someone talking about a hand like that before. But he says that if we're going to make a humanoid robot that's for generalized, that's for general purpose, you must solve the hand problem, which is a sheesh moment. I mean that <sighs> no other humanoid robots can do this and just take a look at this image look at the hand on this optimus it looks it looks like a human and tesla's the only one the only human robot that has a hand like this that can do 20 that can go 22 degrees of free degree of freedom with the hands they see that the hand is a very 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 important thing to do if you want to generalize this and they are generalizing this which is a sheesh moment at the end of all this optimus Elon says they're struggling with this. Right now, we're struggling with the, the final design of the hardware. Like I said, it's really primarily the hand. It's not to just, just dismiss the rest of the robot. The rest of it's also uh, important. But, but the hands are, the hands inclusive of the forearm are a majority of the engineering difficulty of the entire robot. And then let, let's assume you get past the hardware challenges. How much do you sort of get for free um, based on all the progress that's happening with LLMs? Will, you know, will consumers just be able to interact with this, talk to the robot, ask oh, yeah. it to do things, it'll understand and sort of... Oh yeah, sure. yeah, you know. yeah no problem. Right now, they're struggling with the hardware to finish off this Optimus bot. The software is something else, that's the part that's gonna be juicy. But the hardware, which is the hand, is what he's talking about here. That's the final design of the hardware, which is gonna be very impressive to see, I think, on a shareholder meeting. But if that's the only thing that they're struggling on, my God, Elon is right. They are very close to being finalized. He also says that you can interact with this thing very easily. Now, of course, we saw the latest, the, the latest video of the CEO of Salesforce talking to this thing. It looked a bit, I mean, it wasn't that impressive. I don't know why they even posted that thing, but I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to it, to that where how you can talk with Grok, how people are using Grok and Teslas. That is now, that is the right way to interact. And I think in the future, 
That's how Tesla Optimus is going to interact with us. Now that's with Optimus. Elon is now going to be talking about FSD. And this part, this is this is what I love about FS. This is why I this is this is the mode, right? Of course, manufacturing is Tesla's mode as well, and we'll know that in the coming years. But Robotaxi right now is Tesla's mode. It's not Uber can compete, Waymo can compete, Zoox can compete, Lyft can compete. None, none of these guys can compete. Tesla is the only one that can do what they can do, and I don't care what anybody says. So let's take a listen to what Elon's going to say. He talks about everything AI five, AI four, but just a remarkable. How remarkable AI5 is, it's crazy. At Tesla, we basically had two different chip programs, one Dojo and one uh, Do Dojo on the training side, and then what we call you know, AI4, it's just our inference chip. The AI4 is currently shipping in all vehicles, um, and we're finalize finalizing the design of AI5, which will be an immense jump from AI4. By some metrics, the improvement in AI5 will be 40 times better than AI4. Wow. So 40%, 40 times. And uh, this is because we work so closely at a very fine-grained level on the AI software and the AI hardware. So we know exactly where the limiting factors are. In terms of, of nominal sort of uh, raw compute, it's, it's eight times more compute, about nine times more memory, uh, roughly five times more memory bandwidth. So. Uh, but because we're addressing some core limitations in AI4, you multiply that by that, that 8x compute improvement by another 5x improvement because of, of uh, optimization at a, at a, at a very fine-grained silicon level of things that are currently suboptimal in AI4. That's where you get the 40x improvement. I, I am confident that the current ch uh, chips, uh, AI, AI4 chips that are in the cars, will uh, achieve self-driving safety that is at least two to three times that of, of human and, and maybe even 10x. Wow. Um, and the software that uh, will be released for that is, is coming out over the next uh, few months. So version 14 will be the biggest uh, upgrade in Tesla software since version 12. We are increasing the uh, parameter count by an order of magnitude. There's a lot of uh, reinforcement learning that's been used is like you can think of AI sort of a, as a way of compressing reality and, and, and some of those compression steps were, were too lossy and, and we addressed the lossiness in the compression steps. So th these are all software updates that'll that'll go out. So just over there updates. Um, your car is going to feel like it is sentient by the end of the year. 40 times better improvement than AI4. That is insane. Now, AI5 is in the final design as well, and we do know that's going to be a 2026 thing. I think mid-2026, we may, or probably near end of 2026, we may see AI5 come online. But that is insane. 40, that 40 times better than AI4. That's crazy. He also says that it's eight times more compute, nine times more memory, five times more memory bandwidth. I mean, this is just, I mean, and you know, with all that, Elon says that the AI4 hardware will achieve self-driving safety that is at least two to three times of that of a human. He's mentioned that. He also said maybe 10x that. Now, he has said that for AI5, not AI4. So that's interesting. He also says that the software will be released for that is coming over the next few months. So before end of the year or at the end of the year. V14 will be the biggest upgrade in Tesla software since version 12. And he says that your car is going to feel like it's sentient by the end of the year. Sheesh moment. So by end of the year, this thing can drive two to three times better than you. And it's practice. It's solved. Like Tesla has solved this thing. And I just can't wait to see the robot taxi expand crazy in the US. That's... That's what I'm betting on. And that's what I've been betting on. That's why I'm all in because of this reason right here. And seeing it and seeing it by happening by end of this year and then onwards, it's going to be absolutely a sheesh mo moment. And then he finishes off this awesome interview by saying this. The government is basically unfixable. <laughs> <laughs> Elon, oh, oh, only... Oh, only I poor David's uh, noble efforts in this... Yeah. Uh, it, it's good, to, it's, it's good to have talented people in the administration, uh, but at the end of the day, if you look at our national debt, which is uh, insanely high, uh, the interest payments exceed the uh, Defense Department, I guess, sorry, War Department uh, <laughs> budget. And they keep rising. So if AI and robots don't solve our national debt, we're, we're toast. 
AI and optimist human robots, that's the only way to fix this. And that is very bullish coming from Elon at the same time when we had his compensation package come online too. So it's the only way. And he's, you, you bet it's going to happen. It's going to go right away. It's going to be insane. It's going to be an awesome flipping future. Nothing makes me happier than seeing the CEO of the company that I've invested in, Tesla, say that. Because that means he's going to double down on the stuff that really matters. And Tesla is pretty much an AI company at this point. Like if you're, if you're still in it for the cars, I don't know what to say, man. But if you're in it for the robot taxis, the AI, the bots and the energy and all these things, you're going to do very well in the next five years. I'm, just, I'm pushing that. I think the next two three years is going to be flipping stellar for Tesla, in my opinion. So strap in. It's going to be an awesome time. Now, if you guys want to know how many shares you need to retire, Tesla shares, from now to the end of this decade, which is less than five years, check out this video right here. It's not financial advice, but you will see how very interesting the numbers get from the ultra bear case to the ultra bull case. And of course, my realistic case is there as well. It's a fun video. It gets your brain working for a little bit, but it gives you a good idea. So check it out. You're going to disappoint us. Subscribe, guys. Become a channel member. Podcasts are coming for members only, exclusively for members only. Some videos too. And I shall see you guys in the next video. See ya.